Do you want to learn to print TPU like a pro? Well, stick with me because I'm going to share my tips and tricks with you. Let's jump into this together. Welcome to this episode of DIY3Dtech.com. In this episode, I'm going to share some tips and tricks for printing TPU with you guys. TPU is my second favorite plastic next to PETG. It's a highly resilient plastic and very useful. However, it can also have some of its challenges to print, and that's what I want to help you guys with today. So, one of the first things that I did to print TPU successfully is I modified this Wanhao i3 printer uh, for TPU. All I do is print TPU on this particular printer, and I want to talk about some of those modifications as well as some of my slicer settings for this printer. So one of the first things you'll notice is this bed is rather odd. So this is a fennel bed. I originally created it uh, for nylon, and I found it worked better with TPU than it did nylon, so it sort of got dedicated to that purpose. If you look back, you can see where I actually machined this out of a bigger piece on the CNC to actually bolt the one how bed. So this is, again, dedicated to TPU. The other piece that we have is right here, the hot end. So I've modified the hot end from direct drive to a Bowden um, uh, E3D V6 knockoff. It's an all metal hot end uh, and it works great. Now a lot of people might say direct drive is better for uh, you know flexible filament. They may be right. I've been printing this for years. Highly successful but the all metal is important. The other thing that's hugely important is this weird thing over here. So I replaced the smaller I think it was a 20 millimeter fan with a 40 millimeter fan to really keep this cool because I think in the cool part of the hot end it's critical to keep TPU cool because it's already very flexible it doesn't want to compress or retract very nicely and if it gets warm and well I should say the warmer it gets the worse it's going to get so this does a really good job of stabilizing the plastic within the hot end element so this is a critical component to the success of the system now the extruder which I'm using is actually a 3D printed extruder that I printed a couple years back that's uh, flexible filament capable and it's done really well. I've talked for many years about replacing it but just have not found the time to do it. And it's going strong and again I've printed out hundreds of parts of this on this guy. It's really my go-to printer uh, for a lot of parts where I need resiliency because TPU just holds up like crazy. Now I want to talk a little bit about the slicing settings. So I typically, number one, print this at about 240, 245C. I print the bed temperature or set the bed temperature to 70 degrees C. The main reason it is is adhesion because with this fennel bed, when you heat it up like PEI, the part sticks, cools down, part releases. So that's the main purpose for heating the bed up. The other piece that I really want to hit on is retraction. Retraction is your enemy. So with, even with this Bowden tube, I know this is going to sound funny, I retract at 1.5 millimeters at 25 millimeters a second. Normally I would become far more aggressive on both settings with PETG or PLA. Works good, minimizes the stringing, but the other catch to this whole piece is I only print one part at a time. Uh, because one of the things I find printing multiple parts increases retraction and does a lot of bad things. And what happens is it really gums up your hot end, uh, plastic doesn't feed correctly, you get crazy stringing, you got to increase the retraction. So again, my objective here is not high volume throughput, however quality and reliability. When I start this to print, I want to hit the button, I want to walk away and know I'm going to get a part out at the end because I don't have all day to babysit this. And I also don't want to spend half my lifetime cleaning up TPU because TPU is a pain to clean up. So I find with those retraction settings, printing one part at a time in this temperature setting to work very well. Almost, I'll knock on wood here, almost literally air free. While I haven't kept exact statistics, I would say probably 99% of my parts print without problems. And so again, those are my tips and tricks. Do you have any specific tips and tricks you would add to that? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this useful, give it a big thumbs up. Swag Shop is going to be up there. Subscribe over there. And we'll catch you in the next video where we print something else cool. Cheers, guys. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.